Zinedine Zidane is a name that has been on the list of a lot of United fans for who could be our next manager after Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. What I've done in this last week is I've taken a look at Eric Ten Hag, I've taken a look at Brendan Rodgers, and I've taken a look at Ralph Ragnick and the full story around the reports linking them to Manchester United. Now, with Zidane in United over the last 24, 48 hours, seems to have been some developments. But what is the full story? I'm going to run through it all in this video from Duncan Castles and his article in The Times, which has started these rumours in the last 24 hours, taking a look at what Fabrizio Romano has had to say on the situation and Julian Laurent, probably the two most reliable people when it comes to Zidane news. So please drop a like on the video if you do by the end of it enjoy it if it helps you understand the full story and please consider subscribing if you're new but let's take a look at everything that's gone on with Zidane and United and how maybe that's changed or not changed over the last couple of months so the best place to start is exactly where the reports are now where are they coming from they are coming from Duncan Castles in the Sunday Times he's reporting that Manchester United are stepping up their pursuit of Zinedine Zidane and this is what the article says. United are working to persuade Zidane to succeed Solskjaer. Although Zidane is understood to be unsure whether the opportunity presented by United is the right one to take at this point, United's hierarchy are hopeful that the Frenchman's close relationships with Ronaldo and Varane can convince him to join. Zidane's a free agent, so there's no compensation package. His uh, former track record of delivering trophies while developing younger players at Madrid also marries with a cultural reboot. Story United have sold to supporters and goes on to talk about the Glazers' discontent with Solskjaer as manager. Now, what's your take on these reports? Duncan Castles, as we all know, is a very strange journalist, really, in terms of his relationship with Manchester United because he was the mouthpiece of Jose Mourinho when uh, he was manager and then he left and everything that went on with Van Howe and everything that went on before with Mourinho and then after with Solskjaer. It's been a bit weird with Duncan Castles. And there's no one else really corroborating this story from Duncan Castles. Because if we take a look at how the Zidane stories emerged in the aftermath of Liverpool and City, that's when we really saw the Conte stories develop and accelerate that came out of Italy, with Conte's uh, team basically pushing him towards United. Obviously, he ultimately went to Spurs because United didn't come calling. Now, with Zinedine Zidane, there hasn't really been much from his side. And as I said, Julian Rons, who writes for ESPN, He's considered one of the most reliable journalists on this situation, close to the Zidane camp. Now, back in October, he said that Zidane was massively distancing himself from that job, that he was not interested in managing Manchester United should Ole Gunnar Solskjaer be sacked. And if we rewind to July, this is what Julian Leron said about Zidane's future at that moment in time. Yeah, that's right. That's the idea very much. He knows that he's the next in line because, because he's the outstanding candidate once Deschamps steps down. Or leaves, or leaves his position. It could have happened this summer if, if Deschamps didn't want to continue or if the French Federation had decided for him not to continue. In the end, he will go up to the Qatar World Cup in, in November and December 2022. And after that, his contract comes to an end. He might extend it to 2024 and the Euros in Germany or he might not. And I think Zidane is, is definitely waiting to see what happens after the Qatar World Cup. But he's, that's his ambition, that's his priority, is to take over Deschamps. He's been ready for that job for a long time now. He doesn't want to take any other club jobs, for example. He's had loads of offers already this summer from pretty much everywhere in Europe. But what he wants is a national team. He might just have 15 months to wait, maybe a little bit longer. And then if it's a bit longer, if he has to wait until 2024, maybe that might change a little bit his idea. But certainly if he only has, if we can put it that way, to wait until December 2022, I think he's ready to do that. Julian there saying Zidane is waiting for that France job. Whether that comes in 14, 15 months after Qatar 2022, whether it comes a little bit longer down the line, further down the line, sorry. Maybe that changes the situation, but France is his dream. And on top of that, he's obviously being linked with the PSG job as well, as Pochettino's future is not completely certain, I think we can say. Now that they've signed Messi and signed everybody, there's a real impatience. There always has been an impatience at PSG, but even more so this season because of the team they've got. So PSG and France are probably two jobs considered more likely for Zidane. So where does that leave Manchester United? As I said, there's a bit of a contrasting story coming from Duncan Castles to what Julian Laurent has been saying. Let's take a look at what Fabrizio Romano has had to say on this situation in an exclusive interview he had with Football Espana. Something similar so that Zidane is not desperate to be back at work right now during the season uh, without doing any pre-season with the, with the team. He was suffering this kind of aspect with Real Madrid 
when he was joining back after after a difficult year a few, a few years ago. So he's not desperate to come back right now. He's enjoying his private life in this moment. And so this is why Zidane is not desperate to accept a potential proposal from Man United. From what I told, Man United have not contacted Zidane. So at the moment, there is nothing going on. Let's see, maybe they will be able, if they want, in the coming weeks to change his mind. Look what happened with Tottenham and Antonio Conte. Conte, three weeks ago, was not even considering Tottenham job. Then they called him. They gave him what exactly what he wanted on many aspects of football and then he said yes so in football you can never know how you can change the mind of this of these people but at the moment Zidane is not desperate to to come back and so I don't see Zidane joining any club in a few weeks maybe next summer with the right proposal with the right project okay it could be different or maybe for a French national team after the World Cup but at the moment the situation is still so relaxing around Zidane no one is desperate to open and talk and Romano there pretty much corroborating what Julian and Rons were saying there rather than Duncan Castles. So you've got, on the one hand, you've got Duncan Castles saying that Zinedine Zidane, Manchester United want him. And they, they think that the links with Varane and Ronaldo will help United get Zidane. On the other hand, you've got Julian and Rons saying that he's waiting for the France job. And then you've got the PSG links coming on top of that. You've got Fabrizio Romano saying that Zidane's not in a rush to get back into management at all whatsoever so i suppose at this point it depends on who you want to believe in the press two very different sides to this story and that's what i do in these videos i try to present you the full story take a look at what all the journalists are saying and you let me know what you think about that in the comments but one thing about zidane i think that's quite important in this whole situation is the fact that zidane's kind of stayed very quiet on all, on all of it really you know zidane hasn't really been speaking look compare it to the Conte situation I wouldn't say Conte was really speaking, but Conte's team were pushing him towards the United job really, really hard. Obviously, he went to Spurs because United did not come calling. Didn't work out for him. Zidane has stayed very, very muted. And I think that does silence does sometimes say a lot. Uh, and with Zidane, it seems like he's waiting for that France job. He's obviously done everything he really needs to do with Real Madrid, hasn't he? Because look, let's take a quick look back at Zidane's career. You know, let three Champions Leagues, a couple of the Liga titles. He really did the business with Real Madrid. Came through as the assistant manager. Came through working with the Castilla team. Came through, managed Real Madrid twice. Over 250 games between it. Won three consecutive Champions League titles. And the Liga title between 2016 and 2018. Left in May 2018, returned 10 months later, got a second La Liga title. And in the year after that, only lost the La Liga title on the last day of the season to Atletico Madrid. So almost in two tenures at Real Madrid, he nearly won three Champions Leagues and three La Liga titles. That's an incredible, incredible return at what is probably the most demanding job in football, the most unforgiving job in football i would say it's a real madrid job right let me know if you disagree with that one certainly the most unforgiving fans i mean they were booing ronaldo at certain points they were booing Bayer. they boo everyone they would boo their own mother that's that's what they do at real madrid uh very very unforgiving circumstances so you have to credit zidane for the success that he had there now the caveat to that that a lot of people will argue is hey come on sam man they, they have bail benzema ramos ronaldo varan cruz modric Geez, Marcelo, he had the absolute golden generation of Real Madrid, but Real Madrid have had golden generations and not done anything with them. So you have to give credit to Zidane for inspiring that. And certainly with the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Champions Leagues, three in a row. And that was at a time when nobody had won two in a row and they went and did three in a row. Wow, it really was incredible from Real Madrid under Zinedine Zidane. But Manchester United, I suppose before I move on to that next part, let's take a quick look at his overall loose philosophy i'm not going to go in depth because i maybe i'll do a separate video on that as i've done with brendan rogers as i've also done with ralph ragnick and i would say quickly before i move on and say thank you very much to everybody for the feedback and the comments and all the videos i've been doing over the last 10 days i pride myself on doing more researched videos videos that offer genuine insight that after watching it for 10 15 20 minutes you come out of it and go i now know something that i didn't know before i watched this video that's what i try to always do and I hope that sometimes I'll do that. It won't happen all the time, but come on, we're all human. So please drop a like on the video if you do learn something from this one. But let's take a quick look at what Zidane had to say about his philosophy and his style in a documentary he filmed a while ago. These are the quotes from Marsa. 
He's saying football isn't that complicated. It's about passing. The higher up the pitch you play, the more dangerous you become. I'm on the player's side. I listen to them. I want my team to play, spread the ball about whenever they have it, play it forward from the back and make the best possible decision before they even receive it. When they don't have the ball, I want them to track back, keep a tight defence, pressure the opposition high up the pitch and never let them get in behind. I want them to try and win the ball as high up the pitch as possible because that will see them avoid having to run an extra 80 metres. All of that gives the team balance. Some people will see things differently, but it's as simple as that to me. So he does, and he, he did operate quite an aggressive 4-3-3 at Real Madrid. And with the team he had, as I said, Bale, Benzema and Ronaldo. And then he had Cruz and Modric. And you have, I suppose, Casemiro, if you want to throw him in there. I'm not sure if that, whether, whether that was uh, Zidane time or not. I mean, their team was phenomenal. And it was perfect for the 4-3-3. And Zidane got the most out of them. But what's your take on these Zidane rumours? Do you think that this is just, uh, I suppose a name being banded around rather than Zidane truly properly being linked to Manchester United? Or do you think there's an actual chance of Zidane coming to Manchester United? My two cents on that, just from a complete opinion point of view, what I've done now is given you all the facts, look at the stories, the reports, looking at what Julian Arondas had to say, looking at what Fabrizio Romano has had to say and Duncan Castles in this situation. But in my, in my opinion, I'd be surprised if Zidane came to Manchester United. I think if Zidane wanted that job, yeah, there would have been a lot more movement from, at least some movement from his side to this point. And it almost seems like United know that because if we're looking at avail available managers right now, Zidane's been available the entire time. There's no compensation package. There's no compensation package for Zidane. There's no anything. If United wanted Zidane, we could go and have a conversation with him straight away. We've not really seen that being the case. Conte is far more Conte links, but again, that's coming from Conte's camp. Uh, and United, as far as we know anyway, which still baffles me beyond belief, we haven't been having talks with any managers. Whether or not the club still truly backs Solskjaer, and I've, 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 had my two cent, I've said my two cents on that. I don't think they are. I think they're using him, but that's a whole different conversation again. If, if United wanted to talk to Zidane, it feels like we would have done more by now. I might be wrong. And I think uh, Fabrizio Romano's example of Conte earlier in, from that video was quite interesting. Things can change over a couple of weeks period. Two, three weeks, all of a sudden, boom, it can change. With Zidane, though, I think that over... Uh, the overarching idea is that he wants that France job. Qatar 2022. So we've got just at 12, 12, 14 months until that's over. Deschamps, I think his contract runs out. Maybe it'll get extended. Maybe it depends what France do at that World Cup. But clearly, at some point, Zidane wants that France job. And clearly in 12, 14 months, he could be in charge of that team that has Mbappe, that, that proper French team, golden generation. I think every France fan would probably want Zidane in as well. Now, PSG can't rule that out. Zidane's going to have his choice, really, of the jobs that he wants. United is definitely going to be an option if we want Zidane. I just don't know whether A, we want Zidane, or B, whether Zidane wants Man United. But these are the full reports and the full story of the Zidane to United rumours. Where do you stand on it all? Do you think Zidane would be a good fit for United? Would you want Zinedine Zidane? Do you think there's any chance that Zidane would come? You let me know everything in the comments below. As always, if there's any other videos like this you'd like me to do, you let me know in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at Sam Peoples underscore. My DMs are always open. But Zidane to United, you let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Take it easy.